Many thanks for making a day to welcome back. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has begun engaging some government institutions and officials to review the country's performance so far under the extended credit facility. The review by the visiting IMF team has been described as crucial because of its impact on the April completion date. George Riafe has more in this report. The mission is coming at a time that the country struggled with its seventh review, making it difficult for the IMF board consideration. For some, this was important to aid the final eighth review by the IMF to end the three-year program in April this year. Sources say there are issues with the country's economic data for the program completion and how challenges with last year's revenue shortfalls could impact on the deficit numbers. We also understand there are concerns about whether the required structural reforms have been done to aid program completion and whether the Bank of Ghana can indeed complete the total cleanup of the banking and non-banking sectors before April 2019. So as I say, if the staff visit doesn't end well with the final board meeting on Ghana's program, it could affect efforts to complete the program as scheduled unless the country gets some waivers or another extension could happen. The IMF team would engage officials of the Bank of Ghana, meet the governors of the central bank, the finance minister Keno Friata, and technical officials of the Bank of Ghana and the finance ministry. They also are expected to engage Vice President Dr. Mohamed Bamiya. Now, GN Savings and Loans, previously GN Bank, is finalizing talks with another bank to help meet its financial commitment to its customers. The move is part of measures taken to deal with the current liquidity challenges it is facing this small in this report. Joy Business is learning that GN has received applications from eight commercial banks that are seeking to act as partner institutions. GN Savings and Loans is finalizing negotiations with one of them with an announcement expected this week. This will help GN depend on this bank for clearing its checks and first transactions since it is expected to lose that function from middle of this year. Sources say this commercial bank is coming on board to leverage on on GN Savings and Loans wide network branches to connect with its clients across the country. Now we understand that negotiations are being structured in a way that could improve GN Savings and Loans liquidity and help earn a deposit of its clients in the coming weeks. GN Bank has been hit with some serious liquidity challenges over the past months, making it difficult to meet customers' withdrawal requests. This and other reasons led to the reclassification of the bank to savings and loans by the Bank of Ghana last month. However, GN Bank insists the challenge has come about due to the inability of government to pay for contracts and services it has carried out for it. Meanwhile, GN Savings and Loans has also stepped up efforts to recover all outstanding loans from its customers, a development that would help improve its liquidity position. Now, Head of Department of Marketing and Entrepreneurship at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Robert Hinton, says banks must return to their core objectives of delivering value to their customers in order to prevent further challenges in the financial sector. His comment follows the Bank of Ghana's recent cleanup of the banking sector, which saw the number of commercial banks drop from 33 to 23. Professor Robert Hinton spoke with Joy Business at a symposium held at the University of Ghana Business School. The two-year reform in the banking sector, which ended December 31st, 2018, resulted in the collapse of nine banks, downgrading of one, merging of six banks, with one bank exiting the country. According to the Bank of Ghana, this was necessary to help address challenges facing the sector. Speaking to Joy Business, head of the Department of Marketing and Entrepreneurship at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Robert Henson said, beyond good governance structures, banks need to deliver value to customers. Banks can do bigger ticket deals. They can decide which segments they want to serve in peculiar ways. So they should spend a lot of time and effort mining the kind of data that gives them insights regarding exactly what the value needs of their various customer audiences are. So would go back to the old school segmentation, targeting and positioning issue again, which is who are we serving, what are their value needs, and how do we serve them so well that when our competitors go to them, they will not find a reason to switch. 
So whilst I'm big on banks focusing on regulatory matters and appropriately handling their risks and having a certain level of operational efficiency, when all is said and done for me, I still think it's about the customer. And I still think banks now more than ever need to go and understand that both at the level of internal customer audiences and external customer audiences, the clarion call should be what is value to them, how do we deliver it. Professor Robert Henson spoke to Joy Business at a symposium by the Marketing and Entrepreneurship Department of the University of Ghana Business School to discuss marketing perspectives on the 2017-2018 banking challenges in Ghana. All right, so we want to move on to the stock market and take a look at the performance of the Ghana Stock Exchange for the past week and the outlook for this week to help us do this analysis is research analyst from Data Bank Research, Adam Boku, who is joining us via Skype. Adam, good afternoon. Welcome to the market, please. Hey, Manuel. All right, so could you give us a recap of what happened, uh, how the, the market ended trading last Friday? Thank you very much, Manuel. At the end of the trading week last week, uh, that was on Friday, um, trading activity was very, very vibrant. We had about uh, 5.72 million Ghana's exchange hands at the, at the end of the week. Um, consequently, the Ghana Stock Exchange Compos Composite Index uh, was down 0.49% to 2,485.66 points, while the Data Bank 20 Index, which measures the top 20 most liquid stocks, the GSE was at 112.94 points. Uh, there were a total of what price changes for the market with six gainers and eight lag. Uh, notable among the laggards was Standard Chartered Bank, which was nine pesos to 21 Ghana C. Ghana Oil Company Limited losing seven pesos to two six ninety three pesos, and Republic Bank losing five pesos to sixty five Ghana pesos. Also on the laggards on the gainers chart, sorry, Access Bank. Gained 38 pesos to 3 cities, 40 pesos. Trust Bank gained 3 pesos to 26 pesos. While Guinness Ghana Brevet also gained 2 pesos to cities, 20 pesos. Zeta General also gained 2 pesos to 96 Ghana pesos. All right, so, so how did the, the currency market fare? So on the interbank market, where banks trade uh, between themselves, um, the Ghana city lost 5 pesos against the U.S. dollar to five Ghana cities. The Taliban remains stable against the pound, still at six cities, 47 pesos west, and the euro at five cities, 67 pesos west. And what about the commodities, gold, um, gold, uh, uh, cocoa, and oil? Right. On the uh, global market, um, Brent crude oil now trade at $62.10. Gold is now trading at $1,302. Pounds, while cocoa is paid two thousand two hundred and fifty-five dollars per trade. Now, what should investors be expecting this week? What's the outlook for the week? Okay. Uh, well, based on uh, the base and offers on the market, uh, we expect strong demand in the state general and without petroleum shares, which would uh, drive up the price uh, this week. And also, selling pressures in ECB Bank, Enterprise Group, and Republic Bank. Uh, we are expecting that their prices uh, will be down at the end of this week. Consequently, we expect that indices, that's the composite index and the DSI 20 to end. So, what two equities would you advise you know, uh, investors to look out for uh, this particular week? And that would be associated with Ghana shares and sub Ghana Ghana Limited. All right, many thanks for that update. Thank you. Adam Bok, who is a research analyst at Data Bank Research, bringing us up to speed with the performance of the stock market. Now, young entrepreneurs will soon benefit from a startup fund to be set up by, the, by Fidelity Bank. Beneficiaries of the fund, according to the bank, will be startups with focus on any of the 17 sustainable development goals to improve the country's performance. Managing director of the bank, Julian Oponi, tells Joy Business that the idea is to ensure that some of the many obstacles hindering startup businesses are eliminated. I mean, our current hope is that, I don't want to give it a finite time, but I would expect that it shouldn't go a lot further than the second quarter of this year. Um, and it's 
slightly past the ideation stage at the moment. Um, I, I don't want to say um, we, we don't necessarily want to commit to a time, but there are things that we need to look at and also probably go through some kind of piloting um, in a controlled environment to make sure that we've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. But basically all we're trying to do is uh, create um, a fund or a process where we can impact positively on the challenges of young entrepreneurs in Ghana because they represent the future. Some of the businesses that are around now may be the next corporates or multinationals coming out of Ghana. And we want to be part of that story. We're a local, you know, indigenous bank. Uh, we have Ghana at heart in everything that we do, and a lot of our operation and activities actually possibly, um, you know, attest to that. So, what we're looking at, it will have. Um, various issues around, you know, maybe not asking for the high level of collateral that you see normally. It will have a bit of a lean on those that are leveraging on opportunities to impact positively on their SDGs and also, um, you know, financial technology and also utilization of technology to impact positively on the lives of others. And it will also, you know, the pricing may, may be, you know, may be impacted, impacted positively. And we will also add other things like business advisory services and collaborations with other key parties who are interested in that sector to make sure that we can, you know, develop positively the young entrepreneurs of Ghana. Now, Valentine's Day is here again and various business stakeholders get ready to make good of the season. For hoteliers, it's a time to take advantage with some attractive and enticing deals. Charles IT has been taking a look at two major hotels in Accra and how they are preparing for Valentine's Day. I found a love for me. Ahead of Val's Day on Thursday, you may have come across various flyers and online ads highlighting best deals for couples and entertainment. The hotel industry can certainly not be left out in times like these. This year, it looks like hotels are really going to cash in on Valentine's Day. For example, for an exotic Valentine's Day treat that will leave a lasting impression, you may book your reservation for this $15,000 offer from Kempinski Gold Coast City Hotel. The $15,000 package will get you a stay in their presidential suite for two. Rubinako is the Red Lady of Kempinski this Val's Day. I took a tour with her to check out the much talked about presidential suite. Of jacuzzi, I hear, I hear of the other stuff. So, if you could walk us to that side alone, so she's going to walk in us to the washroom to see how it sadly it feels like to have that touch on Valentine's Day. Okay, so this is the washroom. The washroom actually comes with a bathtub and a shower. Mm. Yes. Great. So, that's, this is how it's going to look like. So, this is for both couples, or this is just for one person? Okay. And then you have a shower after. Okay. Yeah. Some people don't want to use, some people don't like bathing. Yeah, yeah. So, so the go. traditional way. Yeah. They prefer going the traditional way. So this uh, entirely is that presidential touch that you have on Valentine's Day here at the Kempinski Gold Coast City Hotel. That's great. There is this whole perception that I get that whenever you visit, you know, well-placed hotels, most of the things are free, so you could take, you could take <laughs> the towels and no. the things, everything away. You don't, to, you don't have to do that. If you need any of our souvenirs, you could ask, and then we would gladly give it to you if you have any. Mm. Yes, but you don't have to take them. So this package is just for Valentine's yes. Day, right? So beyond Valentine's Day, you know, you can get all these things. As... Beyond Valentine's Day, we have a, we sell a room for a normal hour rate. And then with that, it comes with the espresso, but you wouldn't get the decoration mm -hmm. unless you request for it. People won't come have their wedding anniversary, use their, you know, celebrate stuff. So when you want that, when we know it's your wedding anniversary, birthday, or anything, we could personally give you complimentary um, decorations, the drinks, 
and everything on the house. Yeah. Ruby, I think I'd have to take time to manage without everything that you've told me and of course get, get, get a whole feel, you know, having to picture myself here. <laughs> I have this I have this hope that I might come here sometime sure with my you partner. Come give it a try. I will definitely come give it a try. I will definitely come give it a try. But you know, all this has to do with Valentine's Day and the business therein when it comes to the hospitality sector. And you mean here at the Kempinski Gold Coast City, you, you just heard from uh, Ruby who walked us through, through the entire you know apartment base and what we should be expecting if you happen to be a part of those who would purchase the presidential suite. But why Val's Day? I sat with Ruweda Salufu, marketing manager of Kempinski Gold Coast City Hotel, as she explains to me the marketing strategy behind this move. Uh, this year we decided to carefully craft a package designed to help you celebrate this, the season of love in grand style. So we are offering you a one night stay in our presidential suite, as you saw, and we have a VIP check-in. So you don't have to go through the normal process, you just come into your room and then we check you in. We're also offering you a complimentary pick up to and from the hotel it was a warm red reception at the Melbourne Peak Ambassador Hotel. Unlike the $15,000 presidential suite package at Kempinski, all rooms here go for competitive rates. Clenthus Covenda is a sous chef at the Melbourne Peak Ambassador Hotel. I first asked him how his outfit is meeting up competition. We allow our our couples to come in and enjoy our facilities on, on Valentine's Day and to rekindle or reconnect emotionally, you know, to, to one another. And you know, we 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 definitely think that uh, that this would be possible the, through the packages that we have. We will set it around here at, at the pool area and you know just before you get to this side, you know, we have an arrival cocktail happening at the at the piazza and uh, thereafter the guys move over this way to enjoy the lovely four-course dining experience which our culinary team will create on that night so there's a lot of a lot of effort and energy that that's gone into this evening to make it a success for Accra there is no gain say that Val's Day is clearly an opportunity to express love indeed it is also that point in time when the hospitality industry some hotels to be precise close deals and increase profit margins for joy business Charles I to report. Hope you give yourself a treat this Valentine's Day. Now, used truck and auto spare parts on importers are calling for uh, calling for a review of upfront payment of duties, describing it as discriminatory. They say the policy threatens the survival of indigenous businesses to the advantage of their foreign counterparts. Prince Apia sat through the deliberation and now reports. Officials of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority have been engaging the importers in Kumase to trash out challenges in the business. A major issue of concern is the upfront duty regime for spare parts and used trucks imports. Nyaba Awiba Azongo is secretary of the Used Truck and Spare Parts Importers Association. He tells Law Business import volumes have dropped significantly as a result, with consequences for government revenue. There is this upfront duty payment policy regime that once you import the cars, duties are collected upfront. And so if we import, imagine 100 cars, vehicles, and these are heavy duty vehicles, and then duties are collected upfront. That regime only ends up locking up capital, the very capital. And you can have about four, three, four, five years, and the vehicles will not be sold. But you've paid up front. But then the major vehicle establishment, the foreign ones, are being given a post-duty payment regime, where it is only when it is due for purchases that you go and pay duties for such transactions. So it means that that policy, in a way, is quite discriminatory against particularly the indigenous industry. So what we are trying to happen for government to address is that yeah. it will be important for government to extend same to the local business establishment. 
increasing invasion of the spare parts business by foreigners. The local players say evade tax due to weak border controls also came up strongly at the forum. Mr. Azungo suggests state establishment of bonded warehouses for used vehicles to address the huge cost of operations. We even propose the establishment of a bonded warehouse. And that'll be it for the marketplace today. Many thanks for watching. My name is Imano Apoachi. We are free. Have a good afternoon.